You're listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network, part of Sports Illustrated, giving you daily NFL Draft, Dynasty, and Devi Fantasy Football Podcasts. Class is in session. Welcome into the draft seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, joined as always by my co host, John Lobb, the Gridiron Scholar. And we have a good one to talk about today. It's Kenny Gainwell Day. John, I know you are excited. We're talking about an AAC player. I know you always get fired up. <laughs> you know, I like talking about the AAC prospects. And I really enjoy watching the Memphis Tigers. Their offense is so fascinating. And I wonder how many of our viewers have forgotten about Kenneth Gainwell. Unfortunately, you know, for us college football fans, he decided to opt out. And he made the right decision. If you know the background, go find it out. It was a family decision. He did what was best for him and his family. But now he's in the NFL draft. He's the clear. But go back, 2019, what a great year he had for the Memphis Tigers. In high school, he was a three-star prospect, Matt, who played quarterback. And when he walked onto the Memphis campus, he walked into a crowded backfield locker room. There was Daryl Henderson, who now plays for the Rams and was a second-round pick, and Antonio Gibson, who was also a second-round pick who we just saw with the Washington Football Club. And Kenneth Gainwell was so good in 2019, Antonio Gibson played wide receiver. Gainwell was the reason why Antonio Gibson didn't line up in the backfield. As I mentioned, he opted out for the 2020 season, and he declared for the draft. But go back to that redshirt freshman year, my friends. We're going to watch some film later. It's spectacular at times. And how good was it? He has a trophy room that is stacked, named First Team Football Writers Association of America, Freshman All-American, American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year, AAC All-Academic Athletic Team, and First Team All-AAC. Just a tremendous year from Kenneth Gainwell. He led all FBS freshmen with 2,069 all-purpose yards. He's the third player in school history with over 2,000 all-purpose yards joining Daryl Henderson, who we mentioned. But more importantly, D'Angelo Williams, the former Panther and the Pittsburgh Steeler, who had a really nice NFL career. When he first took over the backfield, he wasn't expected to be the starter, but they had some injuries with John. Um, oh, Taylor, Patrick Taylor got hurt. Kenneth Gainwell stepped on the field. Matt, he was one of the college fantasy football waiver wire darlings in 2019. His first six games, he had over 100 yards rushing as soon as he took over. And everyone, go to the film against Tulane. You want to see the ceiling of Kenneth Gainwell. He rushed for 104 yards and had over 200 yards receiving. He was the first player since 1997 to accomplish that feat. Now, that's the ceiling of Kenneth Gainwell. Matt, what did your film study say when you studied this young man? Well, John, there's a good reason that fantasy football folks are excited about Kenneth Gainwell. I have him projected to be a weekly starter. So somebody who, in fantasy football terms, he can end up in that running back 24 to 36 type uh, territory fairly quickly. It starts with his athleticism, John. He's got a very nice jump cut, very fluid hips, a super smooth juke move. And at times, you're going to see him put defenders on skates. If you put him in space, he's dangerous. And NFL yeah. teams are going to like that. Now, I give him an 85 for pass catching. I got in a little bit of pushback. I tweeted out that Najee Harris was the best pass catcher in this class, which I stand by, but Kenneth Gainwell is, is right there at number two, and, and his advocates were, were ready to tell me that, oh. that he deserved to be in that conversation, and it's absolutely true, John. He flashes soft hands. He's really consistent. 
Uh, he goes out and he, he's a route runner, so it's not just about catching the ball in the flat. He's a versatile weapon, and the speed helps. Now, I question whether he's got true difference-making breakaway speed, but in the short field, John, he's very quick, and he has bursts of speed that help him maneuver around the field, and I think he has good vision. He's a patient runner. He has time to wait for the hole to open and then hits it hard. We know Memphis is kind of known for opening up uh, space for their running backs. They're playing in the American Conference. I think he reverses field well, and I think he uh, you know, has the ability to understand when it's time to hit the hole, when it's time to be patient. I'm excited about his tape, John. Are you excited? Are you uh, uh, down to flip it on here? Absolutely. I watched him a lot this week, so I'm ready to watch again. I love Kenneth Gainwell. Absolutely, man. Provided by Brandon Lejeune, Debbie Deep Dive on YouTube Woo! and Twitter, as always. And right away here, you're seeing the speed. And you can see there, John, here against Southern, he does get caught up to, but the speed gets him far enough down the field. Look at him close the gap there on this play. That's very nice. Absolutely. So if you like Memphis like I do, you will notice that they do create a lot of space on their offensive line. But his vision is good. I'm not sure if he's going to be like, I, I mean, I absolutely don't think he can be like Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb who could get into very tight quarters and navigate, but you create some lanes and pow, look at that against Nate or Tulsa. Just and you totally could, blew him away. And you could see here, John, against Tulsa, he was very patient. That hole yes. wasn't there at first and he finds it. He squeezes through it and he finds the holes. That's what I like about his vision. It's not always there at Memphis, but you could see, and, and again, against Tulane here, he finds that hole. Absolutely. He is good at it. So I think he's going to be a little scheme system dependent, right? He's He can't back up Derrick Henry in Tennessee. The system will not work for him. But if you put him in and you create these lanes and you let him use his vision, he's going to find the open lane. Look at that. He and just that blasts speed. through it. It's a perfect example here against Navy. That speed gets him downfield. Against most defenses in the NFL, it's not going to be breakaway speed, but it gets him far enough, John, and it gets him the touchdown here on this play. As you can see, he makes that extra effort to get over the end zone. Yes, he has very good short distance speed. And, and look, look at, at this downfield. Look at that pass catching downfield. That's a real route, John. That's that's not the flat. You know, he gets downfield <laughs> and he displays some good hands. And again here, and they'll line him up out wide. Memphis will move him all around the field. Anything they can do to get him the ball. Absolutely. That's part of their system. If you're not multi-talented and versatile, you're probably not going to get on the field for the Memphis Tigers. It's tremendous film, John. I love watching it. Tell me, though, how Kenneth Gainwell matches up to the production metrics that you're looking for in your prospects. I think the first thing that anyone will be concerned about when I put them in my model, the 191. Travis Etienne was 205. I, I expect him to stay over that 200-yard barrier when he gets weighed. The 191 with the year off, Matt, this is going to be fascinating. Is Kenneth Gainwell under 190? How much did Memphis fudge? Or has he spent the, off, the year off getting ready, gaining weight, gaining muscle? I think this is very important. If he comes in under 190, under 190, I'm going to be a little concerned. I hope he's over 195 to 200. That's what I'm hoping for because it does bother me. I think it limits his ceiling. I don't think he can be the, the player who can get you, you know, 15 carries between the tackles. But I put him in a bucket right now with Duke Johnson and Giovanni Bernard. Now, neither of those two players hit their ceiling. I thought that as prospects, they could achieve higher uh, uh, in the NFL. But both of them are legitimate NFL running backs who we've all used on our rosters. They're great third running backs. If you need them in a pinch they're, and they're going to start, they can produce for you. So to me, Kenneth Gainwell is my sixth-ranked running back because I, I think the ceiling is a little bit low. But I do see this Giovanni Bernard role for him. And remember, folks, go back to the first two years when Giovanni Bernard, he was really good the first two years. He's kind of plateaued. They, they changed running backs and schemes in Cincinnati. 
And Duke Johnson has his moments where you're really impressed. So there's not, this is not a knock on Kenneth Gainwell. Now I will say this, Matt, I think he's a better pass catcher than Giovanni Bernard and Duke Johnson. But I'm not as convinced he's as good between the tackles. Giovanni Bernard is an underrated grinder, and so is Duke Johnson. So I'm very happy where I analyze him. Look at that, 6.6 yards per carry, 57 career receptions, and his touchdown percentage for touches is incredibly high at 17. Also, I love the scrimmage yards from scrimmage, 2069, and his scrimmage yards dominator, 30%. Matt, I agree with you. I think his short area burst and his acceleration is tremendous. I agree with the long speed. I think in the NFL, those safeties and those cornerbacks will bring him down a little bit earlier than they did in the college football. But he has a role in the NFL. I hope he can get with the team that is creative and uses him on the edges and allows him to use his vision, but don't expect him to be Nick Chubb between the tackles. I like Kenneth Gainwell a lot, Matt. He's got a role in the NFL, John, and he's going to have a role on your fantasy football team. Put down those pencils. This lesson is over. As always, we appreciate you listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. Please make sure to go ahead and subscribe or give this video a thumbs up, depending on what platform you're listening on.